I have often puzzled and puzzled about what it must be like to go to sleep and never wake up, to be simply not there forever and ever. After all, one has some intimation of this by the interval that separates going to sleep from waking. When we don't have any dreams, but go to sleep, and then suddenly we're there again, and in the interim, there was nothing. And if there was never any end to that interval, if the waking up didn't happen, that's such a curious thought. And yet, you know, I believe that now, although that's rather gloomy kind of consideration, I found that's one of the most creative thoughts I ever thought in my life, and I keep going back to it. You know, it's in line with a lot of the very fundamental questions that children ask. When they say, Mummy, who would I have been if you had married someone else? These are the kind of questions that make us puzzle profoundly about our existence. And one of the reasons why I think thinking about not being, about total non-existence, is so creative, is that in comparison with that thought, the fact that we are seems kind of queer. But you know, in the Western world, I suppose we have two dominant ideas about what happens to us when we die. There's the old-fashioned idea that after we die, we go to another world. I say old-fashioned, not to say it's out of date. We don't know what the answer to this is. But that's the traditional answer of the Western world. When you die, you go to another life, maybe heaven, maybe purgatory, maybe hell, who knows. I think nowadays, though, the more general idea, the more plausible idea to many people is that when we die, we just cease to be. That's all there is to it. But we're inclined, I think, to have in our minds a picture of this, which indeed is depressing, of being shut up in the dark, for always and always and always, to be kind of buried alive in a blackness, where we are blind, deaf, and dumb, but somehow still conscious. But in the Eastern world, there are different ideas of this. The major Eastern idea is what is generally known as reincarnation of going through life after life after life in an endless series. Now, of course, when any idea like that is explained, the first thing that we ask is, is it true? Is there a process of rebirth? But you know, as this idea is held by deeply thoughtful Hindus and Buddhists, it isn't a belief in something which we can't prove. It's really quite a self-evident notion. Think of it in this way. Supposing I make two statements. Statement one. After I die, I shall be reborn again as a baby, but I shall forget my former life. Statement two. After I die, a baby will be born. Now, I believe that those two statements are saying exactly the same thing. And we know that the second one is true. Babies are always being born. Conscious beings of all kinds are constantly coming into existence after others die. But why would I think that the two statements are really the same statement? Because after all, if you die and your memory comes to an end, and you forget who you were, being reborn again is exactly the equivalent of somebody else being born. 
because we have no consciousness of our continuity unless we have memory. If the memory goes, then we might just as well be somebody else. But it seems to me that the fascinating thing about this is that although a particular set of memories vanishes, death is not the end of consciousness. In other words, we are deluded by a kind of fantasy. If we think of death as endless darkness, endless nothingness is not only inconceivable, but it's logically absolutely meaningless. 